the music leaves was laid on your dear son your precious one all my debt he paid with his moon love for me no one could And as we think about that great love that Jesus had for us, and we think about the things that we should do, we worship him. And this is when we talk about how the light of the world came down. Light of the world. So, come, now is the time to worship.
Still the greatest treasure remains for those who gladly choose you now. got some um we'd like people to partner with us in prayer for all our groups that take place in church like lunch club um the youth club i know that it doesn't take place in church but it's part of this church um the repair cafe all sorts of things we're asking people to partner with uh, in prayer with us so if you'd like to be part of that praying for a specific activity then um come and see one of the stewards i think it's only me and linda here to, oh and jill sorry lovely um, today, um, and we can put your names down to do that, okay? Um, did anyone get a diary or calendar this year? Anyone got a diary or calendar? Anyone got a diary or calendar? So I went to Pantry in the week, I'd like some input here. <laughs> yes, okay, good. Mark this date down. 8th to the 10th of July is our Hill House Church weekend away, open to everyone and anyone who comes to church, okay? At no age limit at all, so all welcome. Um, there's a time to talk together, get to know folks, have food, have activities, crafts, and of course worship, and time to spend talking about our faith and doing sessions. Um, you can dip in and out as and when you want. There are um, 12 annex rooms, which are all en suite. They're priced at £87 per person, and the main house is dormitory-style, family-style rooms. They are £72 per person, all our young folks in um, full-time education are free, okay? So if you want any more information about that, come and see me. Um, any, well, I'm here every week, so <laughs> come and see me and talk to me about, about it. Um, if you want uh, to pay in instalments, that's also possible. Um, there will be coffee after church today. So if you go out into the dining room and sit at a table, please don't go up to the hatch, then you will be served, okay? So it's coffee and tea after church today. That just leaves me to welcome Kathy this morning. Welcome, Kathy. May the Lord bless you. Thank you. Well, good morning, everybody. It's lovely to be here with you again. Come and join the body of Christ. Come whether you feel weak or you feel strong. Come whether you are suffering or whether you're rejoicing. Come whether you feel oppressed or free. All are welcome here. Side by side, hand in hand, we all stand together in the body of Christ. We pray. Just as we are, Lord, we gather in your presence. Help us to be the body of Christ in this place, to stand together with our neighbours, to bring good news to the poor, to help set the oppressed free. In your strength and in your name, we pray. Amen. And we continue our worship with three, three songs, hymns, I don't know what to call them. We're going to start off with uh, Mission Praise 14, All Heaven Declares.
Stand among us in the meeting of our lives.
that God will bind us together. So that is our third one, bind us together. So, Lord, as, as the children go, we just ask your blessing upon their time together in the Sunday School Hall. May they just know your presence. May they be bound together in your love. Amen. I don't think I should say I'd be glad they're gone out, but I've suddenly realised my prayers were a little bit adult for them and that I hadn't actually clicked as to how many young ones there would be here. So let us join in prayer. Today, Lord God, we come before you as is our custom, as was the custom of Jesus growing up in Nazareth. We await your word to us now, just like those who waited while he spoke in the synagogue after his ministry had begun. May we hear your call and stand with him and with one another to serve freely in the work you have given us. 
God of heaven and earth, we kneel in adoration before the mystery was made manifest in your Son, Jesus, who stood with us as one of us. So we stand with one another in adoring you by living the way of love and life he showed us, setting us free to serve the fullness of your grace. We praise you for the freedom that we take for granted, Lord, the freedom to serve you every day of our lives, openly and seldom challenged. We give so little thought to this freedom that sometimes we fail to exercise it. So we thank you, Lord, for every opportunity that comes our way to be your hands, your eyes, your heart in this world, and to do your will, to see things as you do, to share your love. We praise you that in serving, we stand along, alongside our sisters and brothers in Christ, in a ministry stretching down the generations from Jesus himself. All thanks and praise be to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yet, Lord, we confess that we do get too wrapped up in our own thoughts and circles and family to become aware, unaware of the needs of others, especially for the need for us to stand alongside them in their Christian journey. We confess that we often want to do things our way and not as others want to do. So it appears that we are not standing alongside them when they have been standing alongside us. We ask for your forgiveness for our self-centeredness and lead us into a closer bond with you and others who profess your name so that we stay alert to the needs of others and each other. Amen. And so we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Now you have a sharing time, don't you? When you, when you share with where you have seen God in your life in this past week. Has anyone got anything they wanted to share? No? No, not tonight, nothing? Okay, okay. Well, I've just found him alongside me getting this service ready because I've had a million distractions trying to stop me um, getting it ready. So we're thinking about free, set free to serve and being alongside people. Um, and alongside one another within our church. And not to go our individual ways as we see fit. And we think about what could be called Jesus' mission statement and your who we are statement in relation to scriptures. <clears throat> if a mission statement or a who we are statement is stating the purpose, let us get into thinking of some questions ourselves. What do you consider to be your purpose in life? Now, I'm going to give you a little while to ponder it. If 
you want to share with somebody else, then you can. I mean, it may be you feel that, that you have more than one purpose in life. Or you may feel that your purpose has changed. But I want you to have a little think for a minute about what you think your purpose has been in life. So has anybody got anything they'd like to share on that? That maybe they've never stopped to think what their purpose in life is, that they've just gone from A to B to C and not really thought as to whether they... Yes. Oh, you've been wondering that all your life. <laughs> yes, yes. Yes, some feel as though that what is this purpose that I'm here. I think it is to share and love for other people. There, yes, yes, I'd go with that, that, that your purpose can be spreading out to others yeah. and caring for others. Yeah. yeah. You do. Yeah. Praise God, whatever the circumstances. That's a good purpose, isn't it? Yes, yes. Well, I decided I couldn't ask you yours without working out what mine was. And I don't think I've ever worked out what mine was before. So my purpose is to serve as Christ's child, to be open to the many ways there seems to be the need. My catering training led me to Kelston Park as a cook, and a few years later, as a mother, I got involved in youth work and youth junior church, and then later as a preacher. And I think that's where I felt my purpose has changed somewhat. And I'm sure there's a lot of other people that would feel that at one stage of their life, their purpose was, say, with yours was teaching, wouldn't it, Francis? And now you're here doing everything, I think. <laughs> well, that's how it seems to me on the outside. The second question is, have you experienced a call to serve in a specific way? I think my more recent call is um, when David Pendle, as a circuit steward, phoned me and asked me to be a circuit steward. Uh, Martin wasn't very keen for me to do it, and I sort of thought, oh, do I want any more responsibilities? And then I went to church the next morning, and Stephen's sermon just said to me, yes, you should be doing it. So many of you know that I was circuit steward because I came here to join your church councils and such like as part of circuit stewarding. And then the third question is how easy is it to find ways to serve and work together within the church community? I suddenly remembered the first time I went to uh, Martin's Church at Weston, and um, there was communion, and I just walked down with his mother and this other lady. I uh, just wanted to be part, you know, wipe, wipe the glasses up or something. And I really felt pushed out. You know, it was her job, not his mother. His mother was lovely. Um, but this other lady who was sort of, you know, it was her job. There was no way that she was going to have me helping. So some people are a bit, uh, they've got to work on their own. They can't work as a team. This means that maybe it appears they're not serving the Lord as much as they are. And then there's those that, always volunteer whatever needs doing, whether they are able to do the task or whether they are not. I had a young woman down at Midsummer Norton when she heard something was needed doing, and 
do you think I could do that, she said. And I had to be honest with her and say, no, it was you know, beyond her limitations. And then there are those who think they are never good enough to be able to do things. It sometimes makes me wonder whether they are um, just, well, I mean, a lot of them, it's their self-esteem is low, and so um, they aren't able to do things. But sometimes they don't want to be involved or committed or be at risk going out of their comfort zone, as we hear these days. So, what each of us do depends on many factors, yet doing God's work here and now, we need to come alongside each other as well as with Christ to maximize the opportunities and go the way God wants us to go. So, we'll think some more later on about who we are, but for the moment we're going to sing We love the place, O God, where in your honor dwells. 731. then we're going to look at this who are we statement. Can we have it up on the, there we go. Who are we now? Who's looked at that statement recently? It's on your website. That's where I found it. No? I'm not surprised. I don't go on our website and look up our mission statement. Stephen keeps reminding us of it, but it still doesn't stay. I thought we'd read it together. So, let's read Who Are We? We are a welcoming church where everyone matters, from the youngest to the oldest. We believe that everyone has something to bring that will add colour and creativity to the church family. Chris J. Status status quo. Uh, Yeah. Let's start that bit again. For, please down, maintaining the status quo is not an option. We hunger to respond to God's love to be transformed to grow. As a church family, we long to become a community of people who not only love and serve Jesus Christ in obedience to his teachings, but are also committed to love and care for each other 
and to bring a blessing to the area in which we live. We try to be just that. We don't know always get it right, but we are committed to trying through the power of the Holy Spirit. Could we go back to the last but one slide? We are committed to care and love with each other and to be a blessing in the area where we live. Oh, and bring a blessing, yes, being a blessing. Well, being a blessing or bring a blessing with each other. I think that's the bit that stuck out to me. So, it gives an overall purpose for this church, this statement, who we are, which then has to be teased out in every area of the church your time of worship, your time with the children, the time with your meals, your time with house groups. All these things go together to make it the Peace Down Church. Now, did anybody have any sort of thoughts as they read it as to um, maybe whether you didn't feel you left, lived up to it or there were bits you didn't realize that um, you didn't understand what was expected. No, nobody, nobody saw. Sort of, um, it's, it's a bit difficult with just one little bit, isn't it? Um, so, the other thought I had was whether perhaps you've moved on. Maybe you need to rethink it or revise it. That life has moved on. And so maybe, you know, we do change our words, don't we? There's this word woke. I have a clue what it means, but they keep using it on the television, but they didn't use it years ago. So that's where I'm thinking, you know, sometimes the wording of things need to be a bit different to bring us to a new place. So now we're going to keep this in mind and hear our Bible readings. First of all, we're going to hear from Corinthians. And the Roots material says, Whatever Paul might be, he is a creative genius. He supplies the church with some of its key ways of self-understanding. His image of the church is as of a body, beautiful, challenging, and fresh. And so we hear from Corinthians. The reading is taken from 1 Corinthians, verses 12 to 31a. Just as a body, though one, has many parts, but, sorry, but all its many parts from one body, so it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one spirit, so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free, and we were all given the one spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. Now if the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not, for that reason, stop being part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not, for that reason, stop being part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And the parts that we think are less honourable, we treat with special honour. And the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty, while our presentable parts need no special treatment. 
But God has put the body together, giving greater honour to the parts that lacked it, so that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honoured, every part rejoices with it. Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. And God has placed in the church, first of all, apostles, second, prophets, third, teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healing, of helping, of guidance, and of different kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all have gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? Now eagerly desire the greater gifts. Amen. And then we go to the Gospel of Luke and we hear um, what has sometimes been classed as Jesus' mission statement or his manifesto or his purpose. Okay. Luke chapter 4, verses 14 to 21. Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit, and news about him spread through the whole countryside. He was teaching in their synagogues, and everyone praised him. He went to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and on the Sabbath day he went into the synagogue, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to, pro to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. Then he rolled up the scroll and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him. He began by saying to them, Today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Amen. Thank you. So, we are called to stand alongside one another, and we are exploring this thought in today's scripture readings. Firstly, through the body Paul gives us in his letter to the Corinthians, and then from Jesus' visit to the synagogue at Nazareth. When I was considering this question of our purpose, as we talked about earlier, I found my mind going to job descriptions where the purpose of the job is itemized so as those applying from the job can understand what it involves and what it is, is its purpose. If it's a company, then probably a mission statement is added. I thought about a company. You know, if a company was all bosses, how would the work get done? If it was all workers, then it might not get work done anyway because they wouldn't know what to do. So there is a place for everyone. And this is what the Corinthians reading is trying to convey, that we have different purposes or functions in God's church and that we need to know what our purpose is and, that ha and how that relates to the whole so that in its endeavor to proclaim the gospel. Proclaiming the gospel is the main purpose of a follower of Christ, whether we do it by what we say, or what we do in his name, or the way we serve him, or the way we serve others, as a part of his witness to his name. 
the message translation for verses 26 and, no, 25 and 26 says this, the way God designed our bodies is a model for understanding our lives together as a church. Every part dependent on every other part. The parts we mention and the parts we don't, the parts we see and the parts we don't. If one part hurts, then every other part is involved in the hurt and the healing. If one part flourishes, every other part enters into exuberance or rejoicing, as it said in the NLV. I think rejoicing is better in that uh, context. Thinking of about our purpose and how we have experienced it over the years helps us to take stock as to where we are in our Christian life and where we ought to be. Are we engaging with our fellow Christians and walking alongside them in a helpful and purposeful way? That will be a wonderful witness to Christ and his love and his care. Or have we lost sight of the church's mission? Do we need to do a prayerful rethink? Paul's analogy of the body is described as the unifying power of the spirit making us one body. It's not something we do ourselves. The spirit makes us one body. The body represents the unity and the diversity of the community. The body needs diversity of its many members just as each member depends on the cooperation of each other members to function as part of the body. The interrelationship is symbiotic. Verse 27 says, All of you are part of Christ's body, each one part of it. Have you ever taken that on board? It's sort of, it was the bit that jumped out at me as I studied this. All of you are part of Christ's body, and each one is part of it all. found it really quite assuring to know that as part of God's body of people, one has a part in it, that each of us have a part. Thus, accepting Christ into your life, you are part of his body, his community, and his church family. I found myself thinking about all the wranglings and discord and such like going on in Parliament this week and thought that's not what God's church should be. We may need at times to question each other's ways and actions if something is not right, but in a caring, loving, constructive manner and not in a, dis- in a destructive way, which is what seems to be in Parliament at the moment. So what can we learn from our Luke reading about standing alongside each other? The account of Jesus in Nazareth Nazareth, follows his temptations in the wilderness. The commentators suggest that this is not in historical order, but put there by Luke as an ideal opening for the message of Jesus, Jesus' mission statement, of making it clear what he understood from his time in the wilderness he was supposed to be doing as God's son in Israel at that time. And his mission statement was taken from Isaiah. The words, to preach the good news to the poor. Be that those in poverty or those that are poor in spirit. We still need to stand alongside Christ 
need to be preaching the good news as we understand it to those who are poor in today's society, both in words and actions. Then the quote from Isaiah goes on, He sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners, recovery of sight for the blind, to release the oppressed, and to proclaim the year of the Lord. And I wondered, are not all these things what we are trying, are they not the things that we are trying to do in today's world as Christians? By the way we worship, by the way we interact with other people, and then things like Christian aid and other charities, they are battling against poverty and injustice. Some of us join the battle by taking an interest and going into our pockets and adding some finance and through prayer. It is one way of standing alongside them if one's not able to directly join in the fight. One of the hymns came back to me as I was thinking about this. It was suggested in the Roots material. It was Charles Wesley's hymn, Soldiers of Christ Arise. We don't sing that very often these days. We don't um, quite have that way now. But the last verse says, From strength to strength go on, wrestle and fight and pray, tread all the powers of darkness down, and win the well-fought day. Still let the Spirit cry in all its soldiers come, till Christ the Lord descend from high and take the conqueror's home. Jesus' ministry begins with a bold and disruptive statement. He chooses passages that speak of not of the rich and powerful, but of the poor and the oppressed, of bringing justice and release. Who are the disruptive voices of today for the poor and the oppressed? Is it you? Is it me? No. Those at the heart of social justice movements include those such as Laura Ann Thompson, who faced institutional re-abuse when she revealed her sexual abuse by the evangelist minister Ravi Zacharias. And then there was Jamal Robinson Brown, the black Anglican priest, who created media fury when he spoke up against the cult of the white British nationalism in February 2021. If Jesus read that scripture today, what chains of oppression might he, his words imply? What is our role in bringing freedom, in serving? We hear, of, hear from the Open Doors and the Barnabas Charities of how Christians and other minor religions are persecuted. But most of us do not get directly involved, only support in prayer and finance. The readings today remind us that God's justice is for everyone, rich or poor, black or white, male or female, good or bad. They affirm the equality of God's eyes our equality in God's eyes, and that we are valuable in various ways. The readings invite us to take action in support of our community and not leave it to others, but to stand alongside one another to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ's life, death, resurrection with its forgiveness of sins. Amen. We now have a time of prayer. A prayer of thanksgiving and a prayer of intercession. So we join in prayer. Heavenly Father, 
we have been thinking about standing alongside each other as Christians in our church. We thank you when they have stood alongside us in friendship and through our difficult times. Thank you that you stand alongside us as we go out and about in our daily lives and in our endeavours to share your love with others. We thank you for the words of scripture that have guided and inspired us day by day. We thank you for the life the te- and the teaching of Jesus, for the love he showed us by dying on the cross, rising from death to save us from our sins and to give us eternal life. And the prayer of intercession. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me, said Jesus. We pray for all who need the Spirit's help in their work, in their family life, in their sickness, and in their life of faith. Lord, bless them and give them the support they need. He has sent me to announce good news to the poor, says Jesus. We pray for all who speak out in Jesus' name, for those who share the gospel in worship, on the street corner, at work, with their neighbours, over the internet. Lord, inspire them and give them the right words to say for people to come to know you closer. Then Jesus said, He sent me out to proclaim the release for the prisoners, recovery of sight for the blind, to let the broken victims go free. We pray for all who serve others in God's name. Those who care for people in prison or imprisoned by their circumstances. We pray for those in hospital and we continue to pray for the COVID pandemic, that it may be brought into control. We pray for those who serve others in the community, like those who do food bank, or citizens' advice, or other charities that reach out to people who are struggling. We pray throughout the world for places that are in conflict. We think of the Ukraine feeling threatened by Russia. We think of Tonga Island that has been devastated by the tsunami. Lord, strengthen them and give them your love. Isaiah's reading ended. He sent me out to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. We pray for all who seek the kingdom of God. Those who are strong in faith and know that you are with them in all they do. Those who are weak and uncertain, still trying to discover your will for them. Lord, fill us with your spirit and help us in worship and service 
to use the many gifts we have been given and to stand alongside each other so that your kingdom may come here. And Lord, as we give our time and our talents and we give our money, we just ask your blessing on, on that, that the money be, be used wisely, that our talents may be used freely, and that your love may be shared with all. Amen. And so we bring our worship to a close with him from Singing the Faith 25. God is here and we his people.
to be the body of Christ in this place. Side by side, hand in hand, help us to stand together, to stand with our neighbours, to break free from all that holds us back, from making the world as you want it to be. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Saviour. Amen.